Hello YouTube, this is Dr. Ronald W. Satz, founder and chair of the International Society of Unified Science and president of TransPower Corporation, the Certified Systems Engineering and uh, Networking Company, essentially. I work as a systems and mechanical engineer and of course as a theoretical physicist. So as usually with my weekly screencast, we'll talk about the reciprocal system and how it compares with conventional theory. Uh, a couple announcements. Uh, this was back in uh, May 23rd, 2014. The reciprocal system microcosmos database is now available. We'll briefly touch on that. By the way, there's nothing comparable with quantum mechanics. And then we'll look at hypervelocity stars and we'll look at uh, this cover from Scientific American back in 2014. So what I'm doing with these YouTube screencasts, I'm making available my WordPress blogs to a different audience, the YouTube audience. So first up is the Reciprocal System Microcosmos Database. Now I've, by this time I've also completed the Macrocosmos Database. The Microcosmos Database is concerned with photons, subatoms, atoms, compounds, and alloys. So it covers all of the microcosmos. And, uh, you know, this is the biggest event in the International Society of Unified Science since the publication of Dewey B. Larson's work, Basic Properties of Matter, back in 1988. So, after six years of very hard work, I completed Module 1 of the Reciprocal System Database, Microcosmos, after some beta testing. Now, it's, um, there's a 30-day free uh, download period, and then you can decide if you wish to purchase the module or not. Uh, there's no printed manual. Most of the fields have tool tips which explain what to enter, and of course I, I have uh, help screens. Uh, I've made the program as easy to use as possible, but you should of course use the fastest computer you have because some of the computations are uh, complicated. Uh, you need Windows XP or higher, and uh, again, it's the software is free for 30 days. You can try it out with no application after the program will lock. Uh, and then there's just a one-time payment of $2.95 to transpower.aol.com using PayPal. Or you can purchase it directly from Amazon, of course. The Macrocosmos database is concerned with all the astronomical phenomena, like the universe as a whole, galaxy clusters, galaxy star clusters, stars, planets, moons, nebulae, minor bodies, and voids, and that's just $195. If you get the, these two modules and you start using it, you'll see the power of the reciprocal system. There's nothing like this with conventional physics. All right, let's turn to the second topic today. This is on hypervelocity stars. So let's go over here to sciencedaily.com, which is the source for the latest research news, as they say. And it says here, a nearest bright hypervelocity star found speeding at 1 million miles per hour probes black hole and dark matter. Well, that's bogus. You know, you have to extract the observations out from the interpretations with all these articles from Science Daily. Because they're always written, uh, you know, with the current conventional paradigm in mind. So anyway, it says here in summary, astronomers have discovered a hypervelocity star that is closest that is the closest, second brightest, and among the largest of 20 found so far, speeding at more than 1 million miles per hour, the star may provide clues about the supermassive black hole at the center of our Milky Way. And of course, that's nonsense. There's a white dwarf core, but singularities are not really possible in, uh, in our universe. So if you see a singularity in the physics theory, you know it's dead wrong. So let's see if we can extract anything else from this. Uh, here's a picture, of course, the, <laughs> the size of the star is grossly uh, magnified here. An astrophysicist artist's conception of a hypervelocity star speeding away from the visible part of the spiral galaxy like a Milky Way and into the invisible halo of the mysterious dark matter that surrounds the galaxy's visible portions. Well, that's nonsense. Uh, let's see, we'll just scroll down here. Uh, 
let's read this quote from Ben Bromley, University of Utah physics and astronomy professor. He says, if you're looking at a herd of cows and one starts going 60 miles per hour, that's telling you something important. <laughs> well, they don't really know what hypervelocity stars are, but of course we do in the reciprocal system. Uh, I guess I guess there's not really much else here. So let's go back. Hypervelocity stars are pulsars or x-pulsars. Uh, that is, uh, those are very very long periods, which are in the process of leaving our galaxy. They come from the white dwarf core of our galaxy. There's no black hole there. They have high velocities in the third space-time dimension, and this allows them to exit. So in the reciprocal system, there are three dimensions of motion, not just the ordinary one dimension. The, the first dimension of motion is speed in space below the speed of light. The second dimension is above the speed of light, but the velocity equation flips, so it's the vehicle's t over s, so the motion is in time. Outward in time is inward in space, and so we get white dwarfs, pulsars, quasars, which are very compact entities. Then there's a third dimension, which is in space, and that's what pulsars have. That's what distinguishes them, in addition to their pulsing, from white dwarfs. So if the velocity of the pulsar is great enough, it will escape the gravitational pull of our galaxy, and it will eventually leave the material sector and go to the inverse half of the universe, which is the cosmic sector. There's no anti-sector, there's no anti-matter. It's matter and inverse matter, not matter and anti-matter. Okay, so that explains what hypervelocity stars are. And by the way, pulsars which emit radio waves are uh, moving away from the galaxy. But those pulsars which are coming back because they don't have enough escape velocity emit x-rays and they're coming back. And they'll eventually go through the normal white dwarf stages, eventually expanding back onto the main sequence. So white dwarfs do not become black dwarfs in the reciprocal system. Everything is cyclical in the reciprocal system. Okay, let's go to the next topic here. This is this uh, cover of Scientific American back in May of 2014, a crisis in physics. Well, this is kind of funny. There's always a crisis in physics because the conventional theorists are clueless about how the universe actually works. So yes, our competitors in theoretical physics finally admit that there's a crisis in physics, but they still refuse to consider the solution, which is the reciprocal system. So study the reciprocal system and prove it for yourself. Over the simplest possible treatment, obtain my work, The End Mysterious Universe. This has all the concepts of the theory together with a lot of diagrams. Available from transpowercorp.com and Amazon, of course. Then, if you want all the equations, and I have thousands of them, which have been developed over many years, you can get my work, Existence and Interactions, a Computational Treatise of the Reciprocal System, The True Theory of Everything. 1711 pages, thousands of equations will keep you busy for months and months. And if you wish to apply the theory in practice, you can get the two database modules, the microcosmos and the macrocosmos. So you can use these in your scientific or engineering practice to do real work. And quantum mechanics is nothing like the, our microcosmos module, and uh, there's nothing in astrophysics like our macrocosmos module. So again, study the reciprocal system and prove it for yourself. And thanks for your attention.